Magic isn't exactly in my line. But when it goes underwater, I'm naturally curious. That's why I was watching Baldwin the Great during a brief holiday at Florida's Silver Springs. Baldwin was a real ham, but his assistant was so pretty that even without a professional interest, I would have enjoyed the performance. Besides, the act intrigued me. I watched it closely. The girl was put into a straitjacket, then into a steamer trunk. There was no apparatus, no false bottom, no place for an air hose. Then the trunk was closed and locked. Heavy chains were wrapped around several times and tightly secured with three padlocks. Someone from the audience came up to check the trunk. The chains and locks were the real thing. Finally, two attendants took this human cargo out to a deep part of the lake and tossed it overboard. It sank immediately. The magician claimed that his powers of concentration would defy death and free the girl. And sure enough, five minutes later, a dangerously long time, she bobbed to the surface with a smile. fascinated me, and so did the underwater techniques that I knew it required. I decided to watch the next performance from the bottom of the lake. I put on my equipment and went down. I swam over to the spot where they dropped the trunk and hid myself. I saw the trunk fall to the bottom. Soon, as I expected, a diver arrived with a ring of keys. opened one padlock, then another, but he fumbled on the last. A cold chill went through me as I counted off the crucial seconds that were wasted. Finally, he got it open, pulled off the chains and opened the trunk.
is Mike Nelson. I've been watching your act. Very clever. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Verna, I'd like you to meet the real star of our show, Miss Verna Carlson. Miss Carlson? How do you do? I'm sure glad that you liked our act, Mr. Nelson. We've gone over real big. Well, uh, I didn't say that I liked it. That's what I want to talk to you about, the uh, way it's being done. It's too dangerous. <laughs> My friend, you missed the whole point of the act. If you know anything about show business, you'd realize that the popularity of the act is due entirely to that illusion of danger. Well, there's nothing wrong in fooling an audience, but uh, why take any unnecessary chances? That's what your diver was doing. Where did you get the absurd idea that we're using a diver? I was down there today during the performance. He had a lot of trouble with those keys. What are you trying to do, steal my act? Who sent you here? Harry, please don't get yourself excited. It's happening again. They're sending spies. They're trying to steal our act. I'm not trying to steal your act. I was just curious. So I went down and took a look. You being the boss, I thought I should tell you how I felt about it all. He's right, Harry. I did fumble those keys. Heard a lot about you, Mike. My name's Bill Davies. Bill, nice to know you. You know, what happened down there today could very easily happen again. You listen to me, Nelson. For 20 years, I've devised every type of escape act, and I've never had an accident, and I never will. Look, magic is your business. Underwater work is mine. And from what I saw down there... Now, if you care about this girl's life, you'll do something about it. I care a great deal. But I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to scare us so you'll break up the act. But it won't work, you understand? It won't work! Thanks for talking to us, Mr. Nelson. I think you'd better leave now. Mr. Nelson? Well, oh, hi. I was hoping you two would show up. Sit down. I feel dreadful the way Harry acted yesterday, Mr. Nelson. I'm sorry. One of these days, his temper's going to get the better of him and he'll crack up completely. Is he always like that? No. You've got to know him. You see, he had a great act, and then his wife and partner stole it and ran off. And he cracked up. He wasn't able to work for years. I can't blame him. The guy's impossible. You know that's not true, Bill. He can be kind and generous. It's, it's just that he was hurt, so he doesn't trust people anymore. Except you. Please, Bill. Mr. Nelson, do you have some suggestions about making our routine safer? What do you think of the possibility of hiding a diving lung in that trunk? Mm -mm. It's impossible. There's no room. Well, you could put some sort of a seal on it. That'd keep the air inside and give you a little margin of safety. Well, Harry might go for that. And uh, you might try aerating your lungs with oxygen just before they locked you in. Mm-mm. Spoil the act. Poor showmanship. Better than drowning. Uh, that's right. And, Bill, uh, from your angle, that trouble uh, that you had yesterday... Yeah, well, that was my fault entirely, Mike. The lock got jammed and I was a little flustered. Baldwin cleans and oils the locks every day. Well, you ought to double-check them anyway. What if something happened to one of those locks? You couldn't open it. Well, I guess I'd break it. You might not have time. What you need down there is another man. You know, in case something goes wrong. That's a great idea, but I don't think Baldwin would go for the added expense. Well, there's no harm in asking him. I know he wouldn't want anything to happen to me. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Mike, for the ideas. I hope Baldwin will buy some of them. Yeah, I do, too. Good luck to you. I was getting ready to leave for Tampa on business when I was surprised by a visit from Baldwin. Hi, Nelson. Oh, hello. I want to apologize for my actions. I, I feel terribly sorry. I found out who you were and your reputation as a skin diver, and I realize you're only trying to help. Oh, that's right. That's all I was trying to do. <laughs> Verna told me that she spoke to you and that you had a suggestion that we have another diver. In an emergency, it might mean the difference between life and death. Yes, I realize that. See, I'm not a diver, and I worked the whole act out on paper. Uh, would you like to take the job, Mr. Nelson? Well, thanks just the same, but I'm tied up. Well, could you get somebody for me? I don't want to take any chances, especially with the girl I'm going to marry. Oh? Huh? Yes, if things go well here in Silver Springs, we'll sign a big contract, and then I'm going to ask Verna to marry me. Oh, I see. Now, about that diver... 
Do you think you could get him here for tomorrow's show? Well, there's a fellow in Miami. Uh, he's an ex-frogman by the name of Johnny Talbot. He's a very good diver. I could contact him for you if you wanted me to. Oh, I'd certainly appreciate that. And do you think you could have him here by tomorrow morning? I'll try it. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. I want to offer you my apologies again. I guess the only excuse I have when a man reaches my age and he falls deeply in love, well, sometimes he gets a little irrational. Good luck. I went back to my room and placed a call to Johnny Talbot. He agreed to take the job. You know, the longer you put it off, the harder it's going to be when you finally do tell him. It'll just be a few more days, Bill, I promise. Harry gets his contract. It won't be such a disappointment to him. Sure you're not going to mind not being the star anymore? Bill, all I want to do is settle down with you to a nice, quiet, peaceful, happy life. You know, the thought of coming home every night, finding you there, cooking dinner. <laughs> I can't cook. Does that matter to you very much? Not very much. How about that swim? Okay. Yes? I'm Johnny Talbot, Mike Nelson's friend. Well, what do you want? Uh, Mike said that you wanted to hire me. I'm a diver. I'm terribly sorry, young man, but you've got me at a loss. Who is this Mike? Mike Nelson. He said he spoke with you, that it was all set. I don't know anybody by that name. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Baldwin. I gave up another job for this. I'm terribly sorry, young man. I wish I could help you. But <laughs> your friend must have pulled some kind of a practical joke on you. Hello? Who'd you say was calling? Oh, yeah, sure, put him on. Hi, Johnny. Okay, Mike. Now, what's the gag? Gag? What do you mean? What are you talking about? This guy Baldwin claims he never told you to hire anybody. You cost me a job. Now, that's the gag. You mean he doesn't want you? You sure you got the right man, Harry Baldwin? I talked with him all right. I'm telling you he said he never hired me. Now, what are you going to do about it? You got me into this. Let me talk to him. I'll put him on the phone. You see there? I'm calling from a booth. He claims he doesn't know you. What kind of crummy gag is this, Mike? I don't know, Johnny. I swear, I don't know. Uh, wait a minute. What time is the first performance of uh, Baldwin's Sacco on, you know? The posters say 1.30. I'll be there as fast as I can. You wait for me, huh? I'll be waiting for you, Mike. From what Johnny told me, I knew something was very wrong. And I had a hunch it was serious. And urgent. that safety man. He phoned he's been held up. He won't be able to make the afternoon show, but he'll be here tonight. Well, then maybe we shouldn't do the first show. We've got a contract. We've got to work. But don't worry about it, Verna. Bill's double-checked the locks. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, let's do it, Bill. It'll be all right. Okay. But this is the last performance this way, right? Right, Bill. Absolutely. You two kids better get ready. Go ahead.
Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. You are about to witness the most incredible demonstration of magic in the history of the art. Before your very eyes, you will see the impossible accomplished in the most daringly dangerous spine-tingling escape act ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, the young creature who dares to defy death itself, the girl in the trunk, Miss Verna Carlson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your full attention, please. In the next few moments, Miss Carlson will be put into a straitjacket and then confined to this trunk. But first, to preclude the slightest possibility of trickery, I would like this trunk to be thoroughly examined. I would like a volunteer from the audience, please. How do you do, sir? I understand that you're the president of the local bank, is that true? No, sir, just the cashier. The cashier? Well, that's close enough to the money for me. <laughs> Excellent. You see, sir, we have here an ordinary steamer trunk. You'll notice there is no possibility of a false bottom, as the dimensions on the inside read exactly the same as the dimensions on the outside. Is that not correct? Right. I wish you'd examine the top and sides of this trunk, sir. Do not take my word for anything. If there is the slightest possibility of a device whereby this trunk can be opened from the inside... Show it to me, and you will receive our standing offer of Gentlemen, the trunk. and watched. The trunk tumbled down. Bill came out and started to work in the padlocks. One minute, ladies and gentlemen. first two opened easily, but he was having trouble again with the third. I realized that Baldwin must have sabotaged the lock in his jealousy. I rushed in to help. Bill was beside himself and didn't understand what I had in mind. I had brought something along that he didn't carry, a magnesium flare. A dangerous thing to carry underwater, but I was glad that I had it today. It was our only hope to get Vern out of that trunk in time. Burn 
shone through the lock like a torch. We ripped off the chains and Bill gave her air, just in time. Three minutes and 30 seconds. from the jacket and we went up together. This time, three heads bobbed to the surface, and there were no smiles. Better take me to the police, Mr. Nelson. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? when there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of sea hunting.